welcome to the Caravan Show, where we discuss all things caravans. That's right, everything you need to know about caravans, from weights, towing, maintenance, appliances, renovations, buying a caravan, repairs, destinations, and reviews. We will also chat with some Aussie legends, manufacturers, suppliers, and of course, people who love caravans. Take it away, Roy. G'day, it's Roy here again from the Caravan Show and Podcast, and I have on the other end of the telephone this morning, uh, Jason Plant, who is the CEO of the Caravan Trade Industry Association of Queensland, or CTI AQ. G'day, how are you going, Jason? Good, Roy, how are you, mate? Good. Jason, um, it's actually a relatively new appointment for you, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's only been, um, I came on from uh, the 1st of January this year. So yeah. it's been um, just over six months now. And prior to that, though, you've, you've been in the sort of a sub-role under your, your predecessor, and um, that's given you quite a big, uh, well, a, a big shoe to fill because uh, Ron Chapman, who sat in that role almost from, well, it was from the day one that it was originally formed, wasn't it? That's correct, mate. Yeah, and, and you've hit the nail on the head. It is, um, they're, they're big shoes to fill, but... Um, I have um, have been fortunate enough to to have been working here and working working with Ron for coming on seven years six six seven years now I think it is and um, working working very closely with him and and other and other industry experts and and, and long serving um, board members and industry professionals as well so it's um, I've I've learned a lot in that period. I know Ron was. Um a big fan of yours. I know he he thought very highly of you, and that's actually a tall order in itself. Because Ron's a tough man at the best of times, and and he needed to be. We, we know that. But um, having you as a um, or having him rather as a mentor for you must have been a, a really good thing. Jason, tell us how did you come to join the association? What's your background? So, mate, um, quite a quite a varied background. Um, I um, I don't come from recreational vehicles, so I have my my experience is. Is um, is with industry associations. So for for the past seventeen, probably coming on eighteen years now, I've I've worked with worked in industry um, associations. Um, split between um, caravans, so the caravan association, caravan trade and industries association of Queensland. But prior to that, I was with the boating um, the boating industry association here in Queensland for for about seven years, seven or eight years with them as well. So. Um, so I've got a, 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 a strong base in um, in working with um, with uh, not for profit industry associations. But um, prior to that, and actually all through throughout my work with with the industry associations as well, has been a strong focus on on events and marketing as well. So I, I think I've been working in events probably for close to 25 years now. So a long period of time, which is why I don't have much hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you talk as if you you talk as if you're an old man, but from where I'm sitting, you're you're just a young buck. So I find that a little, a, a little bit interesting. Um, on a more personal level, though, Jason, this isn't the only thing you you do. I, I I've actually seen you up on stage singing and performing. So are you still doing that? Uh, I'm, we were we actually as as with most um, most people throughout this this crisis we're faced with at the moment, we've had to stop. Stop performing. We had to cancel a couple of gigs that, that we had scheduled um, scheduled in May. But um, no, mate, that's um, music. Music. Music is a passion for me. Um, I've, um, I've I was fortunate enough to grow up with a, a father who taught music. We all we all learnt various instruments and and sung and um, and um, yeah. I've been playing in a band with my brother and a couple of um, couple of mates for the oh gosh, that's that's for that'll be nearly ten years now. I've been doing that, but um, it's. It's a it's an outlet and it's a a, a good stress relief and um, yeah and, and you have seen me up on stage I forgot that but yep. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you enjoyed it I can't remember I think you might have been up dancing I think but no, uh, I, I'm not sure I got up dancing it wasn't a good look for me <laughs> but no I was very impressed you're very good at it so going back to the CTI AQ and and these are always a mouth for me I'm not really that good with acronyms but um, how does that actually fit in with the um, Caravanning Queensland because it's quite a, a, an interesting association there, isn't it? Yeah, so Caravanning Queensland is it's like the trading name or the the umbrella name that that actually 
uh, two two industry associations um, sit underneath that. There's the the trade side of the association of which I am CEO, and um, and then there's the Caravan Parks Association as well. So we both we to, we we work collectively and um, on on um, on a, on a number of um, issues and initiatives and and very closely. We're both both housed within the same building here at Albion. Um, it's just one of us, myself. We have a, a focus on trade, which uh, we represent. Um, we represent um, retailers, manufacturers, hires, repairers, um, any supplier to the caravan and recreational um, vehicle industry. And then you have the Caravan Parks Association, and um, well, it's, they look after represent caravan parks across the state and associated suppliers. But um, but we're intrinsically linked. One doesn't operate without the other, and um, and I think that's that's one of our challenges moving forward is um, is ensuring that we maintain that um, that really close working re- working relationship for the for the betterment of the industry in 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 its entirety. And of course, when you talk uh, geographically, you're also extremely close to the um, peak body as well, headed up by Stuart Lamont, who we had on the show uh, only a couple of weeks ago, because uh, geographically, yeah. I think you're all in the same building. Yeah, we do. So the um, the, our federal body, the Caravan Industry Association of Australia, they have um, they have staff housed within our building here at Albion, and um, and that's something I'm very proud of is the fact that we have um, we have a very a, a very close working relationship with that federal body as we should because we're um, you know we're we're effectively we're one industry we're all working to um, to a common goal and. Um, and you can achieve a lot more if you if you work collaboratively and um, and and together as as one industry rather than independent states and um, and an independent federal body. But yeah, we do. We have um, we have marketing um, the marketing arm of the um, of the um, federal body is based here in the office, and we have some technical offices based up here. James Field is is located here in in Brisbane. He's a wonderful resource, and Stuart's up here now as well. Um, and then um, they also have an office in Melbourne, but um, we're very, very, very proud of that relationship, and and it's something that we um, we continue to work work on and and maintain. So as CEO, and, and as you've just described, you've got all these wonderful re- working relationships with all these various different people and these various different industry bodies. Um, what specifically, though, do you oversee in terms of um, your management role? So here in Queensland, we so there's a number of things that we look after. So we first and first and foremost, we have our members. So we've got our our, our base of members, which constitute there is about 220 um, uh, businesses that are members of the association. So we we exist to serve to serve them. This is this is their association. We we support them through through work with um, in in far as as far as public relations, marketing. Advocacy with government um, throughout this crisis, we've been um, we've made it um, made it our our um, very, it's it's been a very part of our of our service to our members to make sure that everyone is is kept up to date with the with the changes and the the regulations and the directives that have been coming out through through this crisis um, from Queensland Health and the Queensland government. So that's um, supporting our members is is first and foremost why we are here. And um, we also we run events, as you're aware of. Um, we haven't been able to run them at this stage, but um, they have been over the years an important source of of, um, of industry promotion and also and also um, retail sales for our for our members as well. Um, um, some some of our dealers rely upon our our main industry show in June for for up to up to a third of their annual sales. So it's um. It can be. Um, it's 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 um, it's very important to the association as well. But um, they're 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 two of the main things that we're working on at the moment, Roy. Yeah, I mean, I know you've been involved in a lot of other initiatives. <clears throat> um, certainly, the weights and measure. We know that, um, uh, and I think this might have been initially set up by Ron, where we've been uh, educating the public with with weights. I know you're doing a lot of educational sort of stuff out there to try and teach people what's the right way to go about things in particular say that the weight issues and um these special uh, not not um they sort of safety spots aren't they where where you're inviting people to come in and have a look at their caravans 
make sure that the caravans are compliant with gas regulations uh, and all that sort of stuff. That was another initiative that come out of, um, well, the CTIQ. Yeah, so the, yeah, exactly. The, um, the caravan safety check days, which we've um, we've been running now for um, for five years, they were actually started by uh, Department of Transport here in Queensland um, five years ago. They invited us to participate. Um, Ron, at the time, um, um, made the view that uh, that we could that we could probably assist in making them in in running them more efficiently and, and helping the department. Um, um, extend these events out beyond the southeast corner, which we have done. So, so they're a free service, um, an education service that we offer to consumers, where they can tow their vans, and we encourage them to to load their vans and their vehicles up as if they were heading away on a on a on a trip. Um, bring their vans into a dedicated location, and we have Department of Transport staff, we have um, licensed gas fitters, or we may even have representatives from. Um, from the Department um, of Natural Resources and Mines, where where um, possible, and we will, like you mentioned before, we'll check we'll check their um, check their gas, we'll check their weights to make sure they're not overloaded, and that they're de- they're adhering to the um, to the to the um, um, a, the the weights that um, are specified by the vehicle and the caravan ma- um, manufacturer. But it's all about educating the public, and you've you've hit the nail on the head. By, you know, it's one of the things that we're really focusing on is is educating the consumer on um, on how they can tow and operate their uh, their vehicles safely because it's so important and now more than ever actually because we're seeing a lot more newcomers to the industry. You, you've probably seen it yourself um, with the you know with the um, non no no international travel for the foreseeable future. We're seeing more people more newcomers to the industry. So education is vitally important. Mm. And the biggest problem, of course, as an industry we face is uh, misinformation and, and unfortunately social media is absolutely chock a full of misinformation um, and poor educated people sort of telling people all the wrong things and, and, and actually making it a lot more difficult than it needs to be. And it's good to see that as an industry we've got people like yourselves out there trying their best to educate people the, the correct way so that um, they're going out with the correct information rather than mistruth. So that that's a, a fairly major thing. The it is, and that's um, it's one of those that we've we've taken this um, this this COVID period as an opportunity to focus on on these sort of areas and see how we can how we can achieve more um, in um, in this regard. And there'll be some some initiatives that we're looking at rolling out um, in um, in the near future, depending obviously how this how this. Um, Progresses and how we come out of this um, this um, pandemic, but um, it's it's certainly one of our one of our main pillars is consumer education, and you're going to see more of it. People are hungry for information, um, and um, there's some there's some um, really wonderful, cost effective, and um, and um, means that you can get out and educate consumers, and um, and um, we need to be doing more of it. The other thing, of course, is, uh, again, this isn't widely understood or, or acknowledged, but there's so many different rules and regulations surrounding our industry from the different states. And so I know that, um, that you take on board the local issues, uh, and gas is probably one of the biggest, that you've been actively involved in trying to get these compliance issues sorted out with the local gas people that are different rules and regulations to what they've got in different states. That's that's it. So, you um, you know, we have our, as we mentioned earlier, we've got our, there's our federal body, there's the Caribbean Industry Association of Australia, who who, who looks after, um, obviously, federal issues. Then the individual state associations work very closely, as we do, with our with our state departments and state regulators. So, so even if there is a, a national standard, there can be, there can, and, and um, I'm sure you've come across this as well. There can be different interpretations at a state level to um, to a standard, and it's our it's our role to work with those state regulators to make sure that our industry is um, is represented and and they have a clear understanding. Um, as to uh, as to the, any implications that uh, that any any legislation or directives may have on our industry, and it's important at a state level to maintain that connection with state regulators, so that you do have a voice. Yeah, this is really important. Why, uh, as an industry, we have to have uh, representation. 
from people like yourselves because as individual manufacturers, they couldn't possibly go and attend these things to get the education, to get the same what's happening because in spite of the fact, and I covered this a lot with James Field recently, in spite of the fact that there's a lot of people saying that it's a, an unregulated industry, actually it's an extremely regulated industry and within those regulations there's so much ambiguity because whoever's regulating may try to write a regulation that applies to a wide gauntlet of products, caravans, homes, uh, portable homes that, that's different from motorhomes, that's different from, you know, caravan park units, to all sorts of things that they've got to cover within their, their gambit. And uh, we, we need to try and isolate the individual items that uh, apply to our particular industry. And, and that's where people like yourself, Jason, going and, and spending the time on these boards listening and trying to bring about change is so critical um, oh, it is. You know. It is, Roy, and and it's um it's it's very important to to make sure that we have a voice through these through these committees or these these working groups or these forums. I mean, I'm um, particularly throughout the the past few months, we've been in close consultation, in close contact with all um, all different departments within the state government, from treasury through to tourism, through to even the premier's office. When when borders were closed, we made sure that um. That that our that our members' interests were heard and um, and were kept um, front of mind as uh, front of mind as well. We 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 have um, many manufacturers based up up here in Queensland who who had concerns when um, when the borders were locked down as to what as to what um, what they could and couldn't do as far as delivering product to to interstate customers. So. It was um, very at, at the outset of this, we had clear directions provided to us from the Department of Health as to what our our members could and couldn't do in that regard. And if if, we, if you're not here speaking to government, you may be missed. You may just be forgotten about. So it's it's very very important to have to have that connection and to have that state representation. Um, otherwise, you could be forgotten. Yes, I mean I've received um, the emails that you guys have been sending out, which has been tremendous it's really kept us up to date and it's been very regular and that and that as you say is very important i'm going to just um change to another topic here and that is um the caravan shows because the caravan shows play an enormously um big role for the industry and we've got different types of caravan shows out there as we know when we were talking to james field recently and james was talking about the compliance checks and so forth that they do they're only doing those for industry body approved caravan shows for which there's only really a few major ones and then we've got people out there saying to people don't buy at caravan shows so Jason how would you respond to to those things you come along to a caravan show and to an industry run event um, you can be you can have the confidence that that the products there are being the products on display are being scrutinized so they're being they're being checked by by industry professionals, so technical exports experts, to make sure that they do um, comply, or that at least they they have the they they, um, they have made a commitment to to uh, to manufacture um, compliant product. And we you know we, we aren't regulators, Roy, but um, but I feel that we have a duty as the peak industry body to make sure that consumers are. Um, um, you know, receiving um, what they should be receiving in, in compliant product, and, and we, we we make it a real focal point of our events. Every every exhibitor that participates in that event in that event um, will be checked. Their products will be checked at some point, and um, and if and if issues are identified, we make sure that we notify those exhibitors, and they have to all those manufacturers or dealers, and um, and they must rectify those problems. If they can't rectify them at the time, they need to put a plan in place to um, to um, to provide us with um, with evidence moving forward that they will um, rectify any any um, any issues, particularly safety issues. And um, and and a lot of these things are you know they're they're innocent um, oversights or mistakes, and and our members are. Are genuinely um, appreciative of these checks, um, and um, it's just again, it's part of the service that we that we offer to our members through these events in conjunction with our federal body. Of course, this is something that doesn't happen though for non-industry shows. So, if I, as an individual, want to set up a caravan show, and there are ways and means that I could perhaps do this, I can go and get a yard somewhere or a big 
paddock and I can invite all these people and charge them money to, to display their caravans. Now I can charge the general public to come in and look at these caravans. But I'm not going through the processes that the industry shows do in terms of ensuring that compliance of those caravans that are at that show are met. So That's right. That's, uh, you that's know, right. So it's and, another and big plus, isn't it? It is, and and you don't have to, you know. As, as a commercial operator, you can go and run shows, and you don't have to, you don't have to run these checks. But like I mentioned earlier, this is just a, I I firmly believe that we, as the peak body, have a duty to the consumer to to work with our our members to make sure the product is compliant. Is every product on display at an industry show one hundred percent compliant? No, and I think you'd be, um, you know, when you've got nine hundred um, to a thousand individual products on display, it would be. Um, um, uh, very ambitious to think that that every single item on display was 100% um, 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 compliant, but we work very hard to make sure that we address as many issues as we possibly can. And and throughout the the compliance check program, which we've been running for a number of years now, we have seen an, a, a, a very a very strong improvement in the area of non-compliance in events. And I think um, I think the message is certainly getting out there to to manufacturers and um, and dealers that um, you know that some um, compliant product is um, is is important and well, it's a legal requirement and um, and we need to we need to be working with our members to ensure that they are doing all they can to make sure that the consumer is receiving what they what they should be. Yeah, of course. There's people out there listening to this, been saying, "Listen, every manufacturer should make sure every product goes out. There's a hundred percent compliant, a hundred percent of the time." And I don't think anyone here is going to argue that point of saying that that's not the case. But the reality of life is, when we've got so many different rules and regulations and interpretations, then invariably that can fall through the cracks. That that these things can actually happen. It's not what anyone wants. But it, it just no. can. And the, the other thing I think, Jason, that's important is that people understand the difference between the role of compliancing as opposed to quality control. So while you guys can say, look, these vans here are compliant with the rules and regulations, we're making sure of that, your task is not to ensure quality. Quality is something that the buyer's got to, to look at, the same as buying any product out there in the world. They, they've got to decide what is a quality product. That isn't actually the role of the CTI AQs. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And you mentioned and you mentioned it before. It's not just limited to recreational vehicles. It's it's any it's any product, um, any any retail product. There are there you know that uh, uh, um, any product needs that needs to meet certain standards, and and it's it's a standard. It's not quality. So um, so it, you're right. It's up to the consumer to determine that, and um, and we can certainly work towards um, um, ensuring products are compliant, but we don't focus on quality. We also yeah. know that uh, when it comes to, and I won't get too heavily dug into this one, uh, of local yep. production versus import um, mm-hmm. caravans, but we do know with local products that these local products have to comply with Australian manufacturing rules and regulations, that the parts that go into them have to be um, compliant parts, that you can only fit things that have already been approved. We know that when imports come in, that's not the case because we can't ensure compliance of products that are going into the manufacture of those caravans. So, you know, this is a, another area when it comes to the local production versus import. So we can have imports complied but they can only comply to the obvious they can't comply to things that you know we're not aware of um and i know mm. in queensland gas is one of those ones that they ins- insist that gas is done by a qualified gas person overseas product there's there's no way of knowing that so th- that's where this trickiness comes in with imports but we are seeing some decent quality imports happening and we're seeing some partially produced products but we really do want to promote um, our local production as, as an industry and I know this is a, an area that you can't get too involved with but I'm also yeah. I also do want to harp on however the fact that you're working so well with caravan parks because you know there's always been this uh, belief that you can't be sitting with parks if you're producing or promoting off-road free camp park products which is something mm-hmm. I personally produce off-road caravans but we actually work very well with the parks to try and improve those parks as well, don't we? Oh, we do. We do. They're, they're an important part of of, of the um, of the industry. They're they're a partner of ours. Like I said earlier, we 
we exist um, we we exist and we support each other throughout. I mean, every caravan, every every caravan owner, I'm sure at some stage will have stayed in a caravan park. And um, and um, yes, there is um, there is um, um, free camping options as well. And um, we're not against that in certain so it's it's where we're against is non-compliant yes camping as well so it's those those um you know we we just have to be very careful with what we um you know in 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 where we push people but you you um you produce products that can be used anywhere there are some wonderful locations um in caravan parks across the state and national parks as well um, and we work very closely in promoting those because they are an important part of of the industry, vital part of the industry. Without without those caravan parks um, across the state, we wouldn't have um, the um, um, the the retail or manufacturing industry that we do, and and vice versa. So it's um it's I, I know I know that this compliancing is also an issue for the caravan parks because I know mm. from talking to caravan operators, caravan park operators, that one of their their complaints is that they have to comply to all these rules and regulations and yet in some cases a council can come along, the same council that insists that they follow these regulations can set up a campsite within their area where they don't have to comply to the same rules and regulations. Their cost of doing business is considerably less than the actual uh, regulated caravan park and the, the consumers aren't taking this into consideration and I can understand why they don't. But it is actually something that needs to be addressed. It should be a level playing field for absolutely everybody, and they should. And you have, fit. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, Roy. And the, the level playing field that's 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 the key. Whether whether it's caravan parks, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's, you know retailing, all all we're asking for is a level playing field. And if you've got a um, a facility run that is not um, that that is not um, subject to the same rules and regulations and operating costs. Um, that um, that a, a, another or another caravan park or, or um, business is, it's not fair. It's not right, and um, and that's that's where we have an issue. Yeah, and, and it's like the, the park owners that I've spoken to don't seem to have a problem with free campsites. They understand that. Well, for a start off, if we didn't have them, we'd actually need to shrink the industry because there isn't enough parks to cover the number of caravans that are out there on a day to day basis anyway. Yep. Um, and they and they're keen to see that, that, that a lot of these parks become stop gaps. So someone travelling into an area, uh, they may want to go to a caravan park, stay there for a while, uh, fill up their gas bottles, do that sort of stuff, then go out and you know maybe spend a couple of days outside. They need to come back, revitalise their batteries, re, re- stock their supplies, put water in their tanks, maybe enjoy some of the park's facilities again before heading out again. Or if they're doing a trip, they may want to stop at these parks along the, the way. That's um, it. We've spent um, a lot of time on our show talking to regional mayors uh, in recent times. We've actually only had one park operator on, but I think we're actually going to look at trying to talk to a few more of these park operators in the not-too-distant future uh, mm. and, and get more of an opinion on this, explain why they exist, where they exist, and, and what they can offer our listeners, because I think that's also going to be a good, a good thing to do in the future as well. Yeah, there's some wonderful parks out there, mate, and some really passionate people about our industry. And they're particularly the regional, the regional guys. They're um, they're they're needing our needing our support. When I say our support, the uh, recreational vehicle owners um, they they need us to get out there and visit their visit their parks, visit their towns now more than ever. Um, I heard a great. Um, um, there was a story on a- on ABC this morning um, about um, these towns out west welcoming um, vans, just um, um, you know, um, chains of vans coming up from down south. Now that the borders were open, heading back out west into these rural, into these regional communities, and and what a difference it makes to the regional community. Our, our industry is so important, whether it be trade or parks, to the to the um, to the state's economy. And um, and to speak to more of those regional people, I think that'd be um, you'd get you'd get a great insight into how important our industry is to those to those communities. You know, on the on the short term thing, Jason, we're saying to everyone, go out and visit your own backyard because you don't need to wait for the borders to open up. We can go and see local things. In, in a lot of cases, we don't need to travel too far. Um, yeah. Here in here in Brisbane, anyone living in Brisbane that hasn't visited uh, the Redlands. Uh, 
uh, area or hasn't been up on the sunny coast recently or, or out to South Burnett region, out there, you know, Kingaroy and places like this, there is so much to see and do that's not that far from our homes. We can actually do it while we're waiting the borders to open up, spend a few yeah. bucks there, help everyone out, get in there, help these parks. These parks, like everything else, have been suffering. They do need people to go and visit them. And there's all this other infrastructure happening in the background to help our caravan owners with better products um, and new innovations that are occurring. All this is driven by by the dollar. So the more they buy, the more they spend, the better the industry and the facilities available to them will become. So, That's yeah, I, I really want to see us out in their backyards right now. So, and if you don't, um, if you don't own a, uh, you know, people don't own a recreational vehicle, you can hire. You know, try it. Try something before you before you get in and buy. If you you know if you're new to it, if you're you're unsure as to what you um you know which direction you want to head, hire something. Give it a go for a weekend, or visit a caravan park, stay in a cabin, get a taste for the for the lifestyle before you you delve into it. But um, um, it's, it's such a diverse industry, as as you know, Roy. I mean, there's there's something there's something for everyone, but um. But I, I'd encourage anyone new to it who's considering it, who's considering getting into the industry, you know, test it. Grab, grab a, grab a motorhome, hire a caravan, camp a trailer, whatever. Give it, a, give it a go for a weekend. Like, you, you can. Um, there's so many wonderful places within a couple of hours drive of the southeast corner um, that you can escape to and um, leave all your worries behind and. Um, and sit in front of a campfire for a weekend. It's it's pretty relaxing stuff. We <laughs> I just did experienced it down in the granite belt a couple of weeks ago and no, it was it's wonderful. What a great idea. I hadn't actually thought of promoting that aspect, but you're right, they can go and actually hire stuff now and get out there and particularly again why these borders are closed, it's a great opportunity to go out and visit your local stuff. Um, yeah. Jason, as we know, because the COVID nineteen, these shows have been closed. What do you predict the future? When do we think we're going to see some of these shows happening again? I think um, I'm pretty confident that we will be. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the industry run and owned and operated events here in Queensland. I'm I'm pretty confident that we will be um, we'll be able to operate our end of year event in Brisbane, which is the end of October, early November. So we um, we've, we've worked very closely with um, with our venues, um, um, the RNA Showgrounds. We've got a great relationship with them. We've developed a a COVID safe plan for the safe um, operation of of that event, um, and it's um, we've we've got a um, we've got um, a COVID plan sitting with Queensland Health at the moment. I'm fairly confident that that one um, we should be able to see off the ground um, um, earlier than that. We we've postponed well we've cancelled our Sunshine Coast event for the year, which was um, which was supposed to be run at the end of August. Um, we just think the risk is too great at the moment, and um, we'll be focusing all our efforts on that end of year event, and then um, and then launching our 2021 calendar, hopefully later in the year as well. Mate, that's fantastic, and I, and I look forward to catching up with you in the uh, October show. Jason, you've been fantastic. I know you're a busy man. Um, and taking this time, it's actually taken us a long time to get you on the show. So <laughs> we really do appreciate your time and all the work you're doing. I'm a big fan of your of your work. Uh, I make no bones about that. I think you're doing a fantastic job. I think Ron's thanks, mate. I think Ron's really super proud of you. So, mate, thanks for coming on the show, and um, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for having me, Roy. Great to talk to you, mate. Thanks, Jase.